Nate Oates joins us now. He's the head coach at the University of Alabama. Coach, we'll ask that you open things with a statement, then we'll take some questions. We uh, had a good practice yesterday. We made made it through injury free, so I think we'll uh, we as long as we can get through today's uh, practice injury free, we should be healthy for the first time in a while, and we're going to need to be healthy. We're going to need use our depth against uh, UConn, but I, I like where our guys, our heads are at. Obviously, we're big underdogs. We know that UConn's uh, very good. They, you know, they, they've they been running through the competition, but I, I don't think our guys are scared. I think our guys are are confident in their abilities, and we're getting healthy. We'll be ready. We know it's going to be a tough game, but I think we've had good game plans going into the last uh, – few games here in the tournament. Our guys have done a good job executing them. I think we'll have a uh, solid game plan. I think our guys are going to be pretty locked into what we have to do to get uh, to get this thing done on Saturday. Coach, our first question comes up front on the right side of the room. Blake Byler, BamaCentral.com. Nate, obviously getting to the Final Four is a huge accomplishment and, and something that y'all were striving for, but how do you shift from uh, getting that accomplishment to now looking towards accomplishing something else and chasing a championship? You know, we, we talked about at the beginning of the year, you know, our goal was to win championships. We, we didn't win the SEC regular season this year. We'd won that two out of the last three years. You know, we had a shot at it, lost the, the home game to Tennessee and the road game to Florida, which, you know, we didn't win that. Had a shot to win a tournament championship, which we'd what, done two out of the last three years, didn't win that. Now, Here's a chance to win the, the biggest championship out of all of them. So, wow, well, I don't want to take anything away from making a Final Four because it's special. It's something that's never been done in school history. But there's still two games to be played, and the biggest championship of all is still sitting in front of us, and, and we need to get locked in and play it. So let, let's not discount the fact we've made a Final Four. That's a big deal. But we're still playing for a championship. We've got two games left to win the biggest one of all, and, and that's where our mindset's at right now. Second row on the right side. Same area of the room, Coach. Coach Joe Gay through BamaCentral.com. The last couple of weeks, you've really accredited Mark Sears' leadership as being the catalyst for this run. Could you elaborate on maybe what he's doing differently or what he's doing more of in the leadership department that you think has uh, really uh, uh, driven the team to this point? You know what? I think he's done a better job uh, encouraging his teammates um, talking in the huddles, you know, we, we, we got to get stops. You know, he comes in, he's, he's a lot more vocal. You know, I think a lot of guys, maybe it's not their nature to be as vocal, you know, they kind of let their play kind of lead the way, if you will. But but you've got to do more than that if you want to be a real leader. They, 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 there's no option. You have to be vocal. You have to speak up. You have to inspire your guys. He's, he's become more vocal. He's talking in timeouts he's talking in huddles you know he's making sure that he knows what the scouting report is so that he can really talk through with some of these younger guys what we have to do so I think a lot of the more vocal inspiring making holding guys accountable stuff he's been a lot better at coach up front on the left second row Robert O'Connell Wall Street Journal Nate over the last couple of years, UConn's gone from a solid offense to one of the top offenses in the country. Just in your scout, what is what accounts for that uptick? Like, what's gotten to them to this premier level these last couple of years? You know what? I, I know Danny fairly well, as it's well documented, and I, I've had discussions with him. You know, they're, they're you know we're obviously very analytics driven. They are too. You know, they, they take a lot of threes. They don't take too many tough mid-range you know you look at their shot chart it's it's pretty similar to ours now they're they're at the rim shots they get a lot more post-ups than we do but I think you know their shot geography if you will has become pretty clean with a lot of paint shots threes they get to the free throw line you know and I think that Danny's got a good feel for what he wants their identity to be you know we played them last year up at in Portland at uh, the PK 
85 or PKI, whatever it was, you know, and they, 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 they do a really good job playing through a pretty dominant post player and getting their shooters wide open looks and, and not really settling for bad shots. They have no problem going deep into the clock to make sure that they get the shot that they want and are looking for, and he's got all kinds of different sets to get the types of shots they're looking for. The other thing they do a good job of is a guy gets hot, you know, Spencer hits a three, they're probably going to run play for Spencer next time down. He, he, do, he does a, a great job of controlling who gets the shots, and they're going to have their better players are going to get shots that are in their areas that they can make them. And I think he, he's done a really good job of that. And he's gotten really good players, obviously. His recruiting's gone well. But you can get really good players and not put them in the, the right spots. He's got really good players and putting them in the right spots to, to get efficient shots. Coach, that same area, second row? Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach. Blake Neiman, Sun Devil Source. Uh, I was talking to Bobby Hurley the other day, and he said you guys have stayed in touch since your guys' time together at Buffalo. Um, what has your guys' interactions been like through the years, and how impactful was he in preparing you for your first head coaching gig? Yeah, I, we've definitely stayed in touch. I mean, I I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him giving me a shot. So I, I you know, feel like he's a mentor of mine. You know, he's one of the best point guards to ever play. I, I learned a lot about point guard play in the two years I was with him which the way that we want to play, we've had great guard play. We've done a pretty good job putting guards into the NBA and I feel like I did learn a lot in those two years. You know, I, we, we've stayed in touch on different things throughout the years. You know, we've kind of stayed in touch on he's had some really good teams. You know, we've talked about them. We've sometimes one of, one of us is on a losing streak, kind of, pump the other one up. We, we always see each other on the recruiting trail. You know, how's recruiting going? When we played Arizona here, they allowed us to use their gym to, to practice in. You know, and then obviously, we both got the connection with Danny. It's his brother, and I've known Danny for a long time, and Danny's been pretty successful, so we'll text, text on some of Danny's games, too, on, on some of that stuff. So, you know, di- different Different things, different areas. You know, just kind of touching base on basketball-related uh, things throughout the years, and yeah, I mean, you know, he coached him and his brother both coach super intense, and I, I'm not sure I'm quite at the level of intensity those two guys carry on the sideline, but but we're pretty intense as well, and I, I think that there's a reason that their families one big in basketball at, at all levels and I you know kind of learn how to I uh, shoot I learned a lot of drills from Bobby and I think you know he got them from his dad and from his brother and we still use a lot of the drills I learned from Bobby just they're good I shoot his, his dad probably has best drills in, in basketball and the two of those uh, you know Danny and Bobby learned a lot from their dad and I, I was able to learn a little bit a lot from from Bobby and you know Danny as well. In the center of the room, Zach. New York Post. Th- three of the four coaches here were high school coaches, like you were. How how do you think that important is? How important is that for someone once you get to this level? And you know, you always hear about there's so many great high school coaches who never do get that shot. Uh, what was it like for you also when you did finally get that shot? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think there's a lot of really good high school coaches. I went against them up in Metro Detroit area, and you know I've gotten to know a lot of them. Should I, I still steal drills when I go on recruiting trips to see different high school coaches work? I mean, I, I've been fortunate enough to go into some pretty good high school coaches' practices. I, I think you know I was fortunate. I got some breaks, and Bobby gave me my first break. If it wasn't for Bobby giving me that break, I I wouldn't be here. And I think there's a lot of really good high school coaches that just never got a break and you know it's it's unfortunate but there's only so many jobs out there and you know it's hard you can't everybody's not going to get a break so you kind of got to be ready for your breaks if they come 
Like it, it's, it is pretty cool that three of the four of us were high school coaches and not that long ago. I mean, 11 years ago, I was a high school coach. It wasn't too long before that that, by, you know, Danny made the jump straight from St. Benedict's to Wagner. And then, you know, Keats was uh, moved from high school to a college assistant a little bit more like I did and then was able to get a head job at Wilmington. And I, I, think, it, I think it's pretty cool that three high school get, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of high school coaches out there looking at this final four, you know, wondering if they can get a break. And I just tell them, keep, keep working, be ready for a break if it comes. And, you know, sometimes you got to make your breaks, but I, I think it's, I think it's cool. I think it shows you uh, that, you know, there's coaches at all levels that should, I've got a coach on my staff. I hired that, that kind of high school, over in Europe, he had never coached Division One basketball before I hired him last year, and he's done a really good job for me. So the, I think you can make hires from all different areas and levels. It's, it, does the guy know basketball? Is he passionate about it? Is, does he work hard at it? Like that, that's more what I'm looking for in hiring assistants. And I think you know maybe this Final Four helps some ADC see that they, they can think outside the box maybe a little bit more. Up front on the left side. Chase Goodbread with the Tuscaloosa News. Coach, question about Nick Pringle. Um, last week after the Clemson game, I think he cited his leadership and felt like he, he had an inspiring performance for the, for the team. And, of course, like six or eight weeks ago, it looked like it was touch and go whether or not he would be on the team. Can you just speak to the transformation that he's made mentally, and do you think his relationship with Scotty Hollins has had a lot to do with that? It's a good question. It, it kind of it's ironic that question comes after the high school question because I, I go back you know sometimes some guys need some maturity and just need to grow a little bit and I being a high school coach for 11 years I saw a lot of young men change whether it's over the course of one year or over the course of four years and I think you know I, I never would give up on a kid in high school there was a kid that I kicked off the team his junior year in high school that ended up moving in with me that spring because I, I brought him back and never let him play the rest of his junior year. But I brought him back in a program because I was afraid of where he'd end up if he didn't have basketball. So while, you know, he did something significant enough to be done with the team, he couldn't, didn't play any more games the rest of his junior year. But uh, Valdez Green was his name, went by Vinny. Vinny ended up being in a tough spot. He moved in with me that spring, stayed with me all spring, summer, the next year, played for me his senior year, got him in a junior college, came back, stayed with me on his senior breaks. Like, you see guys change, and especially, like, the high school level I was at. So, like, to, to answer your question about Pringle, I think he has changed a lot. I think he, sometimes they have to see things from a different perspective, and you know, one of the question, one of the statements he made to me when he'd come back from, you know, he got suspended. I think that's what you're referring to six to eight weeks ago. Is I didn't realize what a distraction I was to my teammates. And his big thing is he's he's always wanted to be there for his teammates, and he has been. He's been a, a good teammate, but he didn't realize some of the stuff he's doing was a distraction to him, and he didn't want to be that. I think, you know, Tr Scotty's traveled with us all year. Scotty started traveling with us last year with the kind of the adversity we went through. And Scotty's been a, a great mentor to Nick, great mentor to a lot of our guys. I think Scotty helps Nick stay grounded. You know, Nick's very vocal, very – got a great personality. He got natural leadership about him, just need to make sure he's leading the right way. And I think these last few weeks, six to eight weeks, you know, he's, he's made big changes and he's leading us the right way. And he's got this great – infectious personality about him that when you get him leading the right way like he can really be a great leader and I think he's a big part of why we made this run here in the NCAA tournament. Midway back on the left. Hey coach Jonah Crow, Arizona PBS Cronkite News. Um, I was talking to some of your players yesterday about how personable you are. Grant uh, going golfing with you, Sam having a dinner just with you um, and I know you're a teacher at heart so how how have you learned to balance being a friend and being relatable with your players, but also being tough on them and being able to coach them? Yeah, I, I think 
again, I said it yesterday, I wouldn't trade my path for anything. I think being a high school coach helps me in that regard. We, I, The high school job I had wasn't one of these, they could pay you a bunch of money to just be the basketball coach. And I had to actually teach a full-time teaching load. I was teaching <coughs> five hours of math at Romulus. So I typically had, you know, I taught Algebra one. I taught geometry, so I had freshmen, I had sophomores, and I taught statistics. So then I had juniors or seniors. So I literally had my players dang near every year, like from their freshman year up through in math classes. So, you know, and I'd have a freshman kid. So it was easier to build relationships with my players in high school because I'd get them every day in class, even in the off season. So I, I, in a college, you have to create different ways to build it with them outside the basketball floor. You know, like in high school, I mean, I remember E.C. Matthews, big name here, because that's how I really got to know the Hurleys, but E.C.'s mom went on a cruise the fall of his senior year, and she bought him a ticket and assumed he was going to go, and he, he didn't want to go because he's going to miss practice for a week. So the only way she agreed to leave him home was if he stayed with me. I was like, yeah, come on, you can stay with me. So he stayed in my house for a week. And, <coughs> you know, it's different things like that. Vinny lives with me permanently for a couple of years. You know, you have the whole team over for barbecue. You have the whole team over to shoot some pool. So, you know, I, I made sure my house now, I've got a, a little nice game room where I've got pool table, ping pong table, got an Xbox. You know, so I, I like to have the guys over now in college. It's a little different because they're not going to come over all the time. In high school, it's a little di- You know, you put food on the table. Uh, in high school, they're going to come. Like in college, they got a lot more resources. You can't just entice them with some food. Or, But I, I like to, to hang out with them off the court. You know, enough. We've got to, I, look, when I got to Alabama, they, they had a pool table up, but apparently it didn't get used much, at least not by the coaching staff. So I've established myself as uh, number one on the pool, the, the billiards, you know, everybody else can work down. Scotty Hollins, our team chaplains, uh, we got an ongoing uh, running tally on I'm, my I'm head right now. He's probably the second best pool player, but we've also got a ping pong table in there. We got shuffleboard table in there. I just, I, it, it's easy to interact with guys on things like that. I've gone golfing with Cran. I've I, uh, got a put a simulator in my house like a year ago because I stink at golf and I I can go down and hit ball. I, I'm still I still stink. I'm terrible. But I think when I went with Grant, I, I think I beat him by like one. Like now he, he's he can hit it a long ways. He's a little inconsistent like me. I don't hit it near as long as him, but I think I beat him by one. But we I remember I think I had like Sam over there hitting on the simulator. He's I got a video on my phone of him hitting at the fan fest yesterday. He, three strikes, he was out. He missed the ball entirely three straight times. It looks similar to on my simulator. But I think when you're able to hang out with the guys a little bit, do some fun stuff, shoot, we're, the week, I think the day before we uh, left for the tournament, we had everybody out and went. They've got a new pop stroke mini golf thing in Tuscaloosa. We took the whole team out to that. Just get away, don't talk basketball, hang out, let them see you as a, a real person. Uh, I think. I think it works a little bit. So, yeah, we try to do some of that type of stuff. We're going to welcome in March Sears, and we're going to start to transition to our full-court quest press questions, but we're going to take one all the way back and all the way left. Hey, Coach. Brett Greenberg, Bama 247. I know you can't get specifics, but just from a recruiting perspective, what do you think this Final Four appearance does for you guys going forward? Does the recruiting pitch change? Todd, talk about that for a second. It certainly doesn't hurt. I mean – most if, if kids don't want to be a part of a winning team, I probably don't want to. I probably don't want to take them. So you know, we we've had one of the more what would I say modern offenses, one of the more recruitable two offenses in the country over the last five years. You know, we we've done a you know we did a study. We've improved our guys' draft stock more than anybody in the country has over the last five years since we've been there. So we've got the NBA deal. We've had more lottery picks than anybody in the country. We've got the offense going. We've won at a high level, I think, since we've 
since I got to the uh, SEC, they've given out nine trophies. I think we have four of them. You know, there's five regular season, four tournament. They didn't have the tournament my first year. I think we've got four. Kentucky's got one. Tennessee's got two. Auburn's got two. So we've won those championships. We've got an offense. We put guys in the pros. Now we're competing on a national stage in the Final Four to win a national championship. So there's not a lot missing in the recruiting pitch now. So Preston's a big-time recruiter, and he's certainly using this uh, Final Four run to our advantage for sure. And we'll, we'll see what type of dividends uh, we can gain from it uh, moving forward to spring and summer. Back of the room, just to the right of the aisle. White Polo, thank you. Hey, Coach. Mike Miller, Field of 68 Daily. I asked Mark yesterday if there was such a thing as too many threes in a game. Now, you've run the calculus. You tell me, and I'm sure Dan knows the calculus too, is there such a thing as too many threes? No. It, it all depends on how the defense wants to guard us. I think you go back to our Purdue game, what would we shoot, 46, if I remember correct? Like, I, I don't really care. We'll shoot 50 in a game if, I, if that's how they want to guard us. And, you know, if they want to take the paint away, we'll take threes. If they want to take the threes away, we'll take the paint. Now, UConn presents a little bit of challenge because they've got Klingon that kind of roam the paint. And they're, I'm sure they're going to try to run us off the three-point line. So, you know, most games there's a pretty good mix of threes and paint shots. But, no, nah, there's no max. I mean, shoot, we've made – my first year, we set the SEC record for threes made in a game. We made 22 at Auburn. We broke that record, made 23 in a game. We've hit 20-plus, I think, five different times. You can't make 20 if you're not taking 40, 50 of them. So let, it, let them fly. We're going to take some full-court press questions. Let's go to the second row. James Morrell from ASU. Uh, Coach, you kind of touched on this earlier in the press conference, so Mark, if you want to answer this. You talked about how uh, it's important to be here and the job's not done, but not to downplay the fact that this is your first appearance in the Final Four, your program's first appearance. Which is, what does that mean to you to be here on the stage? Go ahead, Mark. That's for you. Uh, I already answered uh, it before you got here. He, he didn't listen to the question. He said that. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Having a first program appearance, you know, it's uh, very special and uh, to soak it all in, you know, but uh, we didn't come here just to have a, just to be satisfied of making the Final Four, you know. We obviously, we have goals and ambitions to win the whole thing. Next full court press question is just to the left of the aisle. Back right microphone. Your left. Front, front right microphone now. Hi, my name is Adriana Lavadri. Um, so I have, so Alabama's full of traditions from Rammer Jammer. I mean, do you guys have any traditions within the locker room, any superstitions that kind of go on that you guys have? Mark, you want to take some uh, traditions, superstitions coach, first, then coach? Uh, I don't, I don't say we have like any traditions with the Rammer Jammer, but uh, I do personally, I love going there, you know, very good breakfast spot. Uh, I also go there occasionally for lunch. She's asking about, do we have any traditions like in the locker room or before the game or any superstitions we have nah. to do this before the game starts or something? Uh, dude, we just play our, we play our music and, you know, we, we say a team prayer before we uh, walk out the game. That would be a good question for uh, Lamika Sears. Oh, yeah. I think she's got a few superstitions, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we go down to the front and center. Hey, what's going on? Jalen Weathers. Um, I got a question for you personally, Mark. Just knowing that you're a student right now, y'all been away for like two, three weeks now. Has it been difficult for you and I guess just really your teammates in general for balancing just that schoolwork along with just focusing on what's at stake right here? Well, I say, uh, I say we love it. We love traveling and we love being away from the school and especially to do play basketball without having to go to do schoolwork. So, you know, we, we love what we're doing. <laughs> We, we also travel our academic coordinator with us on these long trips. So Brittany's on these guys, mandatory study halls. But the, the, the school does a good job making sure we've got tutors on Zooms and they're, they're still doing their schoolwork. Continuing with questions for those in the full court press program, we're going to use the front left microphone, but we're going to go to the right. 
My name is Melody. I'm from Arizona State University. Um, I guess this is kind of a question for both of you. So, Mark, you're coming from Ohio University, and now you're here as a transfer, and you're making it to the Final Four with Alabama for the first time in history. Obviously, that's got to feel amazing. What do you think that the transfer portal has benefited the team for getting to the Final Four? Um, and how do you plan on using that momentum you have right now to continue your career and your lifelong as a former athlete? If that makes sense. Mm, I say uh, when I went to transfer portal, it, it was all about the right fit. And, you know, I felt like Alabama was a perfect fit for me because of the style that they uh, we play. And, you know, um, I feel like that would be very good for uh, future transfer portal commits to come here. Coach, any thoughts on the transfer portal to, as a follow-up? Yeah, I mean, we've obviously used it. You look at our uh, rotation, we've got a lot of guys that came out of the transfer portal, I think, used appropriately. You can build a good roster, and then, you know, you've got to be cognizant of the fact that you want these guys to graduate, so you've got to make sure that their credits transfer in, you get them in the right programs, they can still get their college degree. That, that's the one issue I see with just being able to openly transfer whenever you want is if you, you're transferring multiple times and credits don't transfer, can you get them to graduate in the appropriate time where they finish their playing career and graduate at the same time? Mark's on track to graduate this spring. So, you know, I think we've done a good job. All the graduates, or I'm sorry, all the transfers we take have taken this year or on, past to gra or on pace to graduate at the right time. But, yeah, I mean, you know, for Mark to – you know, Aaron Estrada from Hofstra to Grant Nelson from North Dakota State. I mean, you know, if, if you're able to prove it at a level that maybe you got under-recruited out of high school, there's no reason if you get under-recruited out of high school that you can't then play your way up to play on the biggest stage. And we've got Mark, Grant, Aaron, Latrell Reitzel, Nick Pringle started at Wofford. You know, you kind of go down the list. Like, these guys are now playing on the biggest stage. And I think if you prove yourself, you know, let's keep in mind that we're still here to educate the guys as long as they get their degree. I'm, I'm not opposed to the transfer portal. We, we used it to create this roster, and I think it's done well for the, the individual guys themselves as well. Back up front and to the center. So for you, Mark, how has it been going from the MAC to the SEC? Like I'm, I play football in the MAC. I played at Eastern Michigan University, so I know a little bit about the MAC. So knowing that MAC sometimes, you know, it can, it can get a little disrespect. You feel me? So knowing that you went from the MAC now to the SEC, how has that transition been for you personally? I said uh, the guard play in the MAC is uh, very similar to the SEC. You know, they have we have great guards in the MAC, and then uh, the only thing difference would be the big play. You know, there's not going to be a five man in the MAC that can switch on to a point guard and stay in front. I say that's really the biggest difference between uh, the MAC and the SEC because the SEC you got uh, versatile big guys that can stay in front of the guards. He didn't play in the MAC when I was in the MAC because we had a versatile big guy that would have stayed in front of him. I think. No, no. no. <laughs> Continuing with full court press questions, if there are any. We'll go to the third row. Back right, Mike. Hi, my name is James Lotz. I'm with ASU. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, obviously tomorrow's the first time Alabama will be in the Final Four, and that's a big game. I just wanted to ask how you kind of handle the nerves going in and don't let the game get too big for yourself. I say just take it like it's any other game, you know, just more more people watching, you know. That's, that's the fun about it, just being able to – play for the University of Alabama and just just know this game has meaning and you're not just playing for yourself. Did you have a follow-up up front? We have time for one more. So, yeah, last question, man. How has it been being able to, like, you're on this big stage now, so knowing that you're on this big stage and it's the Final Four and those opportunities rarely come, better yet, even for y'all program, so knowing that y'all have this unique opportunity, how have you been able to find the balance between just seeing what's at stake, seeing that you got to focus on the moment, but at the same time just taking a step back to just be grateful for where you're at and just take a step back to just literally soak everything in? I really uh, – that – uh, when we when we first landed, you know, that's when we started to soak everything in because, you know, they were celebrating us and we got to see the, the trophy and people were handing us gifts and stuff. And 
I say it really stopped when we just started watching film. You know, we just we realized that we're here and we're not here to be satisfied just because we made it. You know, we want to prove more people wrong, and that's what we that's what we stand. We'll take one more from Full Court Press. Hello, my name is Josh from ASU. Um, Coach Nate, what lessons can you take from your time um, coaching high school that you could apply now, whether it's practically or anything like that? Yeah, I, I think. On some levels, coaching is coaching. You've got to have relationships with your players because part of coaching is motivating them to play hard. I think if they don't trust you, if they don't believe in what you're telling them, they're, they're not going to play at the same level they need to. So I think you got to build trust with your players. you got to be super knowledgeable. I think even coaches that build great relationships with their players, if they don't study the game and know what they're talking about, they lose trust. So relationships – trusts you gotta have it all like you can't just and you don't need to be their friend to build a relationship I can have a, a really good relationship with them without I'm, I'm not gonna you know I'm almost 50 years old I'm not gonna be like hanging out with Mark on on the weekends he's gonna do some different stuff but I can have a great relationship with him I, I, I felt like when I was a high school coach I wanted to be the hardest working coach in the state of Michigan so that I could build their Trust, you know, I, I told I had an assistant, a longtime assistant, Josh Baker, who went and took over his own program and won a bunch of state championships at Southfield Christian. But I, I used to tell him, if all we're doing is just teaching these guys how to put a round ball through a ring, we're wasting an awful lot of time. But if I can be the best coach they've had to where I get their respect, so then I can teach them how to grow into be a young man on a lot of other areas. You know, they, they respect you if, if they know you put the work in to make them better at what they're trying to do. And then you can use that to teach them life lessons and a lot of things. I think the same thing goes now. I mean, if they know I'm lazy and I don't know what I'm talking about, like, I, they're not going to respect me as a coach, as a man. So let, let's be the hardest working guy, the most prepared coaches we can possibly be. You, you earn their respect. You treat them with respect. There's a way to gotten on Mark over this year. We need him to guard a little better. We need him to play a little harder, and he's gotten it. But you can get on him without being disrespectful and have a relationship with them, get their respect, build it, get them to play hard. All of that's pretty similar, high school, college, all that. So uh, those are the, 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 the biggest lessons in coaching I think I was able to learn at a high school level. Now, tweaking game plans, X and O, obviously the higher – you get up, the more information you have, the more you're able to do a little bit of that, the better that can go. But the, the crux of it, if you can't build a relationship, garner respect from your team, like high school, college, NBA, it doesn't matter, like you're not going to be a very good coach.